Welcome to BSc Statistics students. In this class, I explain primary data. There are uh, two kinds of uh, data, the primary data and secondary data. So I, I discuss here primary data. What is meant by primary data? Primary data is nothing but uh, the data is collected for first time, of original in nature. If for any kind of statistical inquiry, the data is collected for first time then such kind of data is known as primary data which are collected by originally by the authorities who are required to collect them generally usually uh, who required to collect uh, um, the data uh, they will collect the data the primary data is collected by field workers investigators or enumerators in general uh, the census of india it is uh, one such data uh, we collect uh, in our country for every 10 years. Census will be conducted. Uh, data relates to many, many kind of variables. Data relate to how many per number of persons are there, how many male, how many female. Uh, data relates to what not, everything. Data relates to trade, data relates to uh, income, data to expenditure, uh, what not, everything it is going to be collected in the census. Many number of points are going to be collected in the census. So such kind of collection is known as, uh, it is it is collected for first time and original in nature. Hence it is called primary data. So generally uh, the primary data sources are which are Census of India and uh, which are published by the government and the Reserve Bank of India bulletins published by RBI, which are called uh, uh, in general primary data sources, right? So what are the you know, what are the methods of collecting the primary data? In this class we discuss. Uh, there are four methods: direct personal interview. Indirect personal interview, mail questionnaire method, information gained from the local agents or correspondents. We discuss one by one. If we discuss one by one, direct personal interview. So this is what direct personal interview, which means uh, uh, the investigator personally approaches to each and every respondent and uh, gathers the first hand information and collects the first hand information. That's very important. The reliability of data depends upon the training and attitude of the investigator and supporting attitude of the respondent. The two particular important things, the respondent is also to be supported, should give the, uh, uh, the support and uh, a proper training will be given to the investigator and uh, it depends entire that uh, collection of the data uh, depends on the attitude of the investigator skill and attitude what we call skill and attitude of the investigator that is very important the investigator means who collects the information who collects the information uh, he is called investigator or enumerator okay enumerator or investigator so the respondent means who, who is supposed to give the information who gives the information uh, is, is known as uh, respondent who collects the information is known as uh, investigator or uh, enumerator, right? Uh, if you mm, discuss uh, some of the merits, uh, the data obtained is original, accurate and exact. The method lead, uh, another one, this method leads to obtain more reliable information. Since investigator can clear the doubts and misunderstandings of the respondents, whatever the doubts uh, in a particular question, Okay, and then he can, uh, or the investigator can uh, clarify the um, doubts and uh, whatever the misunderstandings by the of the respondents, right? Uh, another merit. So another merit, uh, if you consider supplementary information, can also be collected about the respondents' personal characteristics and environment. He can, uh, um, uh, uh, by taking chance. You can collect the um, some kind of uh, supplementary information also can be uh, collected by the uh, investigator. This help in the in, in interpreting the results. To interpret the results more accurately and relevantly and appropriately, 
because of the this uh, supplementary information which is collected by the investigator this is what uh, direct personal interview me method and the merits here and if you discuss if you discuss uh, demerits if you discuss the demerits of this particular method uh, the method is not suitable when the number of respondents are very large if there are more respondents are more the um, this is one of the uh, uh, disadvantage it is not suitable the method is costly and time consuming because uh, we have to concentrate on each and every respondent that's very very important uh, whenever uh, number of respondents are large uh, this is not possible it is not suitable and uh, the, the method is costly and time consuming because of the we have to uh, 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 we have to rely on more on the respondents each and every respondent is more important. Skill, no, no, next one, skilled investigators are required to collect the data. That's very, very important. Skilled investigators are required to collect the information. Okay, right. So, therefore, that is one of the disadvantages. Every time, every time, uh, skilled persons are may not be available. So, that is the one of the disadvantages. The success of the survey depends on personal qualities of investigator. That's very important. Um, success of survey always depends on the personal qualities. Personal qualities are required to collect the data. So that is the reason why um, uh, uh, direct personal interview, uh, it, it requires uh, much more skill. It requires uh, personal qualities of the investigator. Uh, otherwise, uh, mm, uh, the uh, primary data, the collection of primary data uh, will lead uh, uh, wrong results right so, so that is what uh, required so these are the demerits of the direct personal interview come to the indirect personal interview what we do here the method is used when the respondents are reluctant to provide the information directly if the uh, firstly we what we do is uh, we try to collect the information directly if they are not provide the information not able to provide the information are they reluctant to provide the information directly then uh, and uh, in such a case where the field of investigation is very large when the field of investigation is very large the information about a large number of respondents can directly be obtained from the, the from one person who may lead the community or head of the organization that is if the uh, investigation is very large that is large number of respondents are there uh, and uh, respondents are reluctant to provide the information directly and uh, when in a such a when such a case uh, in a case where the information about large number of respondents can directly uh, can be obtained directly from one person from, from, from one particular person which may represent the entire community or entire organization, head of the institution, for example, he, uh, the person may be represented for the entire uh, institution, organization, then uh, automatically we can uh, collect the information from one particular person uh, regarding the information about the, um, regarding the information um, from the um, various persons, from various persons. So it is generally used by CBI and police. Uh, for the collecting for collecting the information so for the collecting information generally cbi uh, or the police uh, these are the two important uh, departments uh, and they collect the information from the third person that is indirectly from to collect the information from one particular respondent uh, uh, they collect the information indirectly from the third person and uh, who may lead uh, or who knows the information regarding the first person, right? Uh, the merits. Uh, if the area of investigation is very large, then this met method is not uh, method is suitable. Investigation area is very very large, then this method is uh, very suitable. Uh, another one, merit. Uh, if you can discuss one more merit, personally, if the respondent may not give the information to the investigator, then one may collect the information from the third person. Uh, you can collect the, from the third person information from third person uh, usually it is done by cbi and police uh, so the for for which purposes uh, for these purposes uh, uh, indirect personal interview is most suitable
right and uh, demerits come to the demerits uh, which we if you discuss demerits uh, and the absence of direct uh, contact between investigator and respondent important information may be lost obviously the important information may be lost um, from uh, which is going to be collected from that first person but it is uh, are directly from the person uh, it is, if it is not possible then some particular information may be lost uh, that is uh, the one of the disadvantages of the um, demerit of the indirect personal interview and the information given by the third person may be biased third person may give the information but uh, there may be a chance of uh, information is not uh, unbiased that is some particular bias uh, biased information may be obtained next one the information collected from the different persons may not be same and comparable may not be same of you obviously the information collected from the different persons uh, uh, may not be same and uh, it is not uh, useful for comparison comparative purpose uh, that is this is the second method indirect personal interview interview method next if you go for the third method the mail questionnaire method what is that the mail questionnaire method what we do in this method a set of questions are prepared and sent by a mail um, sent by a mail means uh, you can also treat as post by post uh, uh, we can uh, send or uh, nowadays it is uh, available easily um, we collect some of the mail ids and uh, uh, of the respective persons and then we can uh, send through the mail to the respondents the respondents are rec supposed to fill the schedule and uh, mail them back to the investigating agency that is whatever required information it is to be filled um, by the respondents and then they have they are supposed to uh, sent to the um, uh, investigation agency again that is very important uh, in this method it is very useful when the respondents are educated when the area of investigation is very large uh, if the area of investigation is very large indirect person interview also uh, we can use we can use also make mail questionnaire method the mail questionnaire method is uh, less expensive than the indirect person interview uh, um, right uh, like uh, there are some particular comparisons come to the merits it is useful when the area is large the first uh, particular part we are we have discussed that uh, um, the merit is uh, uh, whenever uh, the investigation area is very large uh, then it is mail questionnaire method is most useful and uh, still if you discuss further more some of the advantages uh, of this method uh, it is useful of when all the respondents are educated and aware that's very important if the, all the persons are educated and they are aware then this method is most more useful and simple then and the third one the information collected by the method by this method is free from the bias of investigators there is no kind of bi uh, personal bias of investigator is present here in this particular method because this method just uh, we take the questionnaires and we mail to the respective um, uh, respondents. So, therefore, no bias of invest, no part of investigator, simply to specify. Next, demerits. It is applicable only to educated respondents. Obviously, that is what uh, one of the uh, disadvantages of this particular method. Those the respondents who are in educated only, this method can be easily applied. Um, next one, some of the respondents may not return the questionnaire. That is uh, non-response or we can consider, we can call. Some of the respondents may not return the questionnaire. Um, obviously, we cannot do when this. Uh, this is one of the demerit. And uh, one more, some of the respondents may send incomplete questionnaires. Even uh, the incompleteness also, we cannot uh, take any kind of action. That is, uh, we cannot uh, do. Uh, any kind of things which is uh, to fill the questionnaire uh, so therefore there may be a, some incompleteness uh, in the questionnaire uh, uh, the questions provided by you by the organization uh, um, respondents may not uh, um, uh, fill uh, completely so therefore so this is also one kind of incompleteness uh, of the data so these are the demerits of the mail questionnaire method and uh, fourth method if you discuss the fourth method fourth method is nothing but uh, information through the local agencies or correspondence 
you see what is the method in this method the, the local agents or correspondents are appointed in different parts of the area under investigation so various from the, the if the data is required from various dictates of a particular state then uh, we have to appoint some particular uh, correspondents or agents uh, in various uh, locations and then um, in various districts for example and then these agents are sent to send uh, agents send the required information at regular intervals of time this method is generally used by newspapers so from the, the agents are supposed to be collect the information and they have to give the information to the organization and such kind of method is known as information through the local agencies or correspondents the merits of these methods uh, this method this method is quite ideal when the information is needed from a wide area that is large area if the area is very large this method is also very useful it is economic in terms of time and money that is more quite uh, obviously uh, this method is uh, mm, quite economic uh, in time and money right uh, and demerits if you come and discuss the demerits the information may not be reliable the information may not be reliable because uh, uh, whatever he or the respondent know, correspondent, uh, what do you call correspondent, which means appointed as a correspondent agent, uh, generally we call investigator, investigator collect the information, uh, generally whoever, uh, whatever the information and that person knows, they, they collect the information, therefore it is it may not be reliable. The data may be affected by the bias of the investigator. Sometimes uh, the investigator, that is the correspondent or whoever collect the information agent, uh, maybe collect, maybe may give the some particular uh, biased information. So therefore, this is what one of the demerit of this particular method. So these are four methods we have discussed. One direct personal interview, second one indirect personal interview, third one mail questionnaire method, fourth one information through the local agents and correspondents. Uh, local agents or correspondents. These are the four methods of collecting the primary data. Hope you understand. Thank you. Thank you so much.